everybody. So it's Friday. That means we get another episode of Harley Quinn on DC Universe. I was really looking forward to this one just because I knew going in that we were going to introduce Catwoman into the show. Obviously, last week we got Barbara Gordon. Now we got Catwoman. So we're getting closer and closer actually now, especially the Gotham City Sirens of Poison Ivy, Catwoman, and Harley Quinn. So it was just really cool seeing them together in one episode. Once again, this is another very solid episode this season. Of course, Harley and the gang now have tried to move on to Mr. Freeze, taking him out, but they can't get in. The ice is too strong. And with the help of some very uh, well-informed henchmen go and actually try and get Firefly's flamethrower from the museum because that's apparently what can actually burn a hole through Mr. Freeze's fortress so they can get in. But of course, it's in a museum that is filled to the brim with booby traps by none other than Dr. Trap, which is a very obscure DC villain, might I add, because that's like, I don't even know what tier. I mean, you, when you think A to Z tiers, like that's a very low ranked villain in my opinion but of course they you know they get some help from Catwoman it's nice to see that they actually did have some previous relationship with Catwoman because Harley's the one that actually called her and Ivy and Catwoman have a relationship that we haven't seen so far but I'm hoping will be explored in later episodes and once again we do get a B storyline with Dr. Psycho where he's kind of being tested by the Riddler because Riddler's still in that hamster wheel in the mall, their mall fortress and because of all that stuff, he's trying to prove himself to be a leader, but Riddler's just egging him on, and then Riddler escapes, and then the rest of the crew that's left behind, you know, Cy Borgman, King Shark, Frank the Plant, everybody, they're all looking for him in the mall. In case you weren't aware, they actually got Sanaa Lathan to do the voice for Catwoman in this series. She's a very talented actress. She's been in a lot of things. Love and Basketball is probably one of my favorite things from her. But she plays the character of Catwoman very well. Basically, all the characteristics of Catwoman you've grown to love over the years, she does them very well. Kind of like a good mix, I feel like. Like of Eartha Kitt and even some Michelle Pfeiffer wrapped in there as well. Really cool. It was actually really cool as well to see her bounce off of Ivy so much because when they do actually infiltrate the museum and do all that stuff, the team gets separated because it's Harley and Kite Man. By the way, Kite Man shows up and I thought he was just going to be another blink and you miss it kind of cameo, but he actually is in a big portion of the episode. But it's them together and also Ivy and Catwoman. And it's established when they introduce Catwoman in the show that Ivy is a little bit awkward around Catwoman. I'd like to see more of that explored in future episodes. But I did like to see Kite Man in there. Kite Man, I thought he was just going to like deliver everybody to the destination like he did and then just peaced out for the rest of the episode. But he's actually in a significant portion of this. He actually has a main actual arc where he's trying to get an engagement ring and goes on the heist with them. Although he has, he's very incompetent. I mean, he's not a very great hero. He stumbles, you know, gets caught in like a really crazy looking trap. And at the end of the day, he can't catch a break anyway because Catwoman steals the engagement ring and then just leaves the episode. It's kind of unfortunate that these couple episodes so far this season have kind of sidelined most of Harley's gang because it's Harley and Ivy and then someone else usually, whether it be Clayface last episode or in this episode it's Catwoman. They kind of just send everyone to do their own B storyline. You know, Dr. Psycho, Cyborgman, Clayface, everybody. They're just all doing their own thing and they're story I mean they don't get a lot of screen time because they are the B storyline there's not too much to it although there are some funny quips between Dr. Psycho and Riddler you know Riddler try uh eggs him on and Dr. Psycho tries to control him but then he's like you can't control me because I'm an A-lister and I'm much smarter than you I thought that was a really great br brilliant line to throw in there because Riddler is a much more well-established villain but it was just, it just sucks that they don't get a lot of screen time with Harley and the gang. Like, they were together in the very beginning of the episode as they try to infiltrate Mr. Freeze's lair, and then they don't really talk to Harley and them until the very tail end of the episode when they come back from their adventure. I did find the inclusion of Dr. Trap to be kind of odd, but in a cool way, just because he is such a low-tier villain that he, the, the fact that he's in this episode is kind of a surprise to me. I mean, it's kudos to the writers of the show for digging him out of the, the depths of all of the villains that don't really get used very much and use him in kind of a main villain role. I mean, he's not in it too much. I mean, he's kind of in the shadows for the most part. And then they get stuck in that big trap at the very end and they use the flamethrower to get out of it and they beat him up fairly quickly because he's not a very great villain in my, like, it's, it's, it's Dr. Trap. I mean, are there a lot of Dr. Trap fans out there in the world? Am I missing something here? But yeah, I mean, it was cool though that the see, just to see the arc as far as Kite Man, he's still trying to propose to Ivy. Harley kind of slowly is coming around to actually liking him, which I'm really glad to see because I've always had a soft spot for Kite Man, even if he is kind of a goofball. He has some charm to him and I can see why Ivy likes him. And it looks like it's finally going to be successful because after all those failed attempts, even in this episode, looks like Ivy is finally ready to be proposed to. So maybe we'll actually get a, a whole wedding and all that of Kite Man and Poison Ivy. But yeah, very solid episode. 
very fun episode. I'm moving the plot along a little bit. Looks like we're going to get more of Mr. Freeze next episode. I really liked his inclusion so far. Alfred Molina has done a really great job as him. Uh, yeah, they got the flamethrower, of course, and they're going to use it to, you know, take on Mr. Freeze. So I'm really excited for next week's episode as well. But those are just my quick thoughts on this episode of Harley Quinn. I really recommend this show if you haven't checked it out yet. I mean, if you're not, if you haven't yet, I mean, you're, you're, you're missing out. It's a really fun show. It's probably my favorite show at the moment. But make sure you leave a comment, comment section down below. What did you think of this episode when you see it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think of Sanaa Lathan as the as Catwoman? I really hope that she comes back for other episodes and this isn't one like a one and done kind of thing. But either way, make sure you leave a comment. I like to talk about all things movies, TV shows, all that jazz here. Thank you as always for checking out my videos. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. Hit that subscribe button if you want to keep the movie reviews, show reactions, unboxings, and more. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.